three, two, one. It's the Puff and Steph podcast. It's Tuesday, and it's another day of Sammy on the show. Hey, girl. Hey. Hi. What's up? Not much. Not much. In just a couple of seconds here, we're going to get the story of how Sammy hurt herself. But first, today's show brought to you by Freisinger Hyundai, right on the price, right on the pike. And we're inside the American Shaman of PA studio. If, if, if you have pain, anxiety, you can't sleep, well, you should meet with a wellness consultant at American Shaman of PA. Life is better with the feather. Check them out on the World Wide Web at hempishealth.com. That's okay. probably what I should do for this. <laughs> okay. So, Sammy just got back from a trip a few days ago. Um, you were in... Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. and you did cliff diving. Not diving. Jumping. Jumping. Cliff rope jumping. Skiing. This so, is something. This is a thing that you paid money to do. Yes. Okay. So Sammy paid money to jump off high places into water. Correct. Okay. There was now, more to it. You take it from there. Go ahead. <laughs> so we went to the rainforest because there's only one rainforest in the United States. So we went there. And we got a tour guide. For those of you who don't know, Puerto Rico is the United States kind of like its territory. So we we paid this guy to like walk us through because it's huge. You could get lost. It's dangerous in some parts because you're going up hiking. So there's like I think eight in our group. It's muddy. It rains four times a day. So I slipped a couple times on my butt. You know, it's it's whatever. Then we get to the waterfalls and stuff, and I'm like, all right, I'm doing all the things. I'm doing it all. I paid money. I'm going to do all the things. Sure. So there's a rope swing and a small cliff. I do the rope swing a couple times. Nailed it. Perfectly fine. Land. Stuck my landing. Good to go. Skip the the cliff jumping on that one because I was waiting for the big one. The next one. Well, I did it. And I landed butt first instead of feet first. How far would you say this was, or how high? They said it's anywhere between 35 to 40 feet, depending on how high the water is. Okay. So. So let's call it 40. Uh-huh. You jumped, you landed butt first, uh-huh. and then what? I felt everything that's inside of me in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> and instant pain in my butt. But the water's cold, so it feels good. The adrenaline's going. It doesn't hurt that bad. I'm like, oh, that's going to suck tomorrow. Yeah. I bruised my coccyx. I'm going to have to look up whether or not I have to beep that. Um, (laughs) My tailbone. So you bruised your tailbone. Yeah. When did you know you bruised it? Instantly. No, I mean like the technical thing. Did you think it was broken? Oh, yeah. I went to the ER as soon as I came back here because I can't sit right. Like right now... Sammy is sitting on a donut. Leaning. L- like a like a yeah, pad. <laughs> my neck pillow. Is that a neck the, pillow? The longest flight of my life home. But they did x-rays and they were like, it's it's not broken. Good news. But if it was, there's you can't put a cast on your butt. No. So if you see me getting in or out of a vehicle or off of a chair and I look weird, that's that's why. Yeah, yesterday you're like leaning forward a little bit. You're like Yeah. <laughs> that is like I, the I can't worst laugh. pain. They told me at the hospital some people break that when they're having babies. Well. No. You that d- kid would be grounded for <laughs> it's an entire life. Do you know what happened? You made me break my butt. Well, I'm sorry that happened to you, Sam. And I wish you nothing but the best and a speedy butt recovery. Yeah, there's nothing speedy about that apparently. It's months. Months. You're months. gonna be you're gonna be uncomfortable for months. Yeah. All right. They're like, just, you know, try to stay off of it. Off, like don't like sitting. Yeah, and ice it, uh, and take some anti-inflammatories. All right, so. we'll just stay off your butt. <laughs> uh, a crazy woman in Germany faked an elaborate wedding to get revenge on an old boyfriend. Her name is Sarah. She posted online pictures of herself holding hands with a groom for hire, we- wearing a long white dress. Uh, She lives in Frankfurt. She split from a guy in 2019, so like two years ago. Hatched her plan shortly after. She rented out uh, and uh, she rented a hall, rounded up her friends to play the role of bridesmaids. She posted the pictures to her Instagram where she was certain her ex would see. 
He found out through Instagram and texted me the next day and freaked out because he thought I was cheating on him while we were together. And people think I'm crazy. That's what she said. Yeah. All right. So as much as I want to make fun of this woman, and I do, don't get me wrong. What about everyone else? That played along? I'm not talking about the dude. Make your money. The groom for hire. Dude, <laughs> get your paper. I'm talking about her friends. When women go, I don't know why guys call us crazy, all right? Or I just don't know it. Like, women, I'm afraid to express one opinion or get mad at my boyfriend because uh, I can't be the crazy woman. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'd be like, boom, this story. This is, a guy would never do this. Now, guys... But most women won't either. <laughs> guys have their own style of crazy. Yeah, they'll go hook up with your best friend. <laughs> well, that's also your best friend's fault. It takes two to tango. Or try. But anyway, you know, guys have their own thing and what they're known for, and I'm not going to defend that. But women, stop acting like y'all are angels. Stop acting like it's always the guy's fault. Stop acting like when a guy says, oh, my ex is crazy. And you're like, oh, I bet she wasn't. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah, it's possible. I would tell you this, and I just told a friend of mine this the other day. We don't just wake up crazy, though. Guys make us crazy. <sighs> okay. All right. Let's take that theory <laughs> and expand on it a little bit. Okay. Let's say you're right. Let's say that this guy who just found out and was mad because less than two years later she's getting married. So he's like, was she cheating on me? That's a valid, mm -hmm. that's a valid thing to say. But let's say that that guy did make this one woman crazy. All right. I will give that to you. Take it. That one's free. <laughs> Thanks. What about her three friends? <laughs> That said, that's a great idea, Sarah. That is a fantastic idea. We will absolutely fake being your bridesmaids at your fake wedding to your groom for hire in the hall that you spent money on. You rented it. We will, just to make this guy jealous and angry, we will 100% do that for you. But that guy made her crazy. Maybe okay. this, is the, this is me looking at it, you know, outside of the box. Maybe they looked at it as, oh, it's a free party. We can go have fun. <laughs> or they're like, I'm just very supportive of my friends. Um, I'm not saying I, that what I'm, they're doing is right. No, it's, it's crazy hanging out with crazy <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> I'm possible. very supportive of my friend and her fake wedding. Just to make a guy. She rented a groom. She rented a hall. She bought a dress. Did the bridesmaids have to buy their own dresses? We, we don't know if they said, hey, Sarah, this is crazy, but I, I'm still do it. But you're crazy. <laughs> okay. Got other people to show up for the wedding. The wedding. Yeah. Come on. It's, I feel like this is a movie. This could be a movie. <laughs> this could be a movie. But I'm so sick of women being like, I don't know why why we're crazy. I don't know why we're crazy. I'm yeah. just trying to understand, like, did she get what she wanted out of it? Yeah, he was angry because he thought that she cheated on him. There's way but that's it. cheaper ways to probably get him angry. Yeah, send him pictures of you hooking up with another dude and, like, timestamp it while you guys were dating. Hold, like, like find a newspaper. Way from, cheaper. <laughs> find, find, find a newspaper from when... You know, like when you guys were dating and hold it up and make out with a dude. Do something other than all of that. <laughs> that was a bit extreme. A little bit. Uh, coming up in just a couple of minutes, cicadas. Do you know about them? Yeah. Well, there's an interesting way to, to handle this situation. And I'll tell you about it next. It's the Puffin Steph Podcast. 
Freisinger Hyundai, a refreshingly different car buying experience. Freisinger Hyundai dedicates itself to customer satisfaction. From the initial sale to the maintenance you'll need during the life of the vehicle, Freisinger Hyundai treats you like family. Check out their large selection of both the latest Hyundai lineup to certified pre-owned and used vehicles. Come see how Freisinger Hyundai drives the difference and tailors the purchase process to your needs. Right on the price, right on the pike. Freisinger Hyundai, 6115 Carlisle Pike Mechanicsburg, 717-766-8422. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. Great news, everyone. American Shaman of PA's doors are back open for normal operations, and they're ready to bring you the much-needed relief that you've been waiting for. They care about their customers, and their customers keep coming back for more. Steve K says, American Shaman products drastically decrease my back pain and relieve my stress in just one month. Thank you. Stop by your local American Shaman of PA store for a free CBD sparkling water and free samples. Find their locations and more at HempusHealth.com. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy. No websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. Now, back to the Puff and Steph podcast. All right, so for those of you who don't know, Brood X cicadas uh, have finally emerged here on the East Coast, and some people figure the best thing that they can do is eat them. Why did I have a feeling you were going to say that? Gene Kritzky, author of, oh, God, this is long, Peria... Peri- Some book. Periodical cicadas? Periodical cicadas. <laughs> Periodical cicadas. The Brood X edition says, you want to eat the females because they're full of eggs. But, it's ha- he how says, do you tell them apart? He says, the flavor is like cold asparagus. Like before you cook it? Egg, n- like no. when it's hard? Oh, I don't know. Um, New York Post asked Joseph Yoon, a private chef, a private chef and founder of Brooklyn Bugs, an edible insect advocacy group, to come up with cicada recipes. And here's what he came up with. Would you eat any of these? No. <laughs> Blanched edamame beans adorned with sea salt and um, fried cicada. No. They tasted plump and nutty. Fried baby cicada eggs. Place atop half a boiled quail egg drizzled in smoldering hot sauce. I'm not eating a quail egg. Garlic cicadas in leek and potato soup. Hmm. No. C- cicada kimchi with black rice. Pickled cicadas with silken tofu and gachu peppers. They went like real extra fancy with it. For dessert, cicadas covered in dark chocolate and gold leaf. They tasted like Nestle Crunch Bar with... I call BS. <laughs> I, I do not believe that for a second. Uh, the chef says he plans on collecting cicadas in all their life cycles from egg to adult. He promises we're going to have a cicada caviar. No thanks. Um, oh, gross. Why do... My fr- if I'm going to eat a bug or something, my first thing is to, to like make a taco or something. I don't cicada know. Cicada tacos? Cicada I don't nachos? Go, I don't go straight to mixing it with quail eggs and fanciness. Cicada dia? <laughs> Yeah. I don't know why I thought tacos, but either way, I'm not putting any of that in my mouth. No? No. No. No, no okay. thanks. Well, let's stick with the uh, gross food. Um, Australia's oldest ever living man says his secret to longevity is eating chicken brains. Uh, retired, retired cattle rancher Dexter Kruger is 111 years old. No, thanks. Uh, in, For me. A, in an interview at his nursing home, uh, he said chicken brains. You know, chickens have a head, and in there is a brain. <laughs> yeah? He goes, and and they are delicious little things. There's only one little bite. 
nursing home uh, manager uh, says that he still has a very sharp mind, saying his memory is amazing for a 111 year old. I don't know about you. I don't even know if I want to live to be 111. I don't. Like, I'm not even 40 and I'm already feeling bad. <laughs> so I'm like, you're telling me I'm not even halfway there yet and I feel like garbage? Ugh, okay. Um, but unless technology and medicine get to the point where I could be a 111 year old that is like walking around and, you know, still being awesome like my normal self, <laughs> um, I don't want it. No. I don't think I do. And especially if I have to get there by eating chicken brains. How often does he eat them? Like, does he eat them at the nursing home now? Do, do they, like, bring them in for him? I don't know. How, do, how does one ever even just think of trying that Well, he was day? a farmer, right? So he lived on a farm. So at some point, it's like, we cut off the chicken head. We eat the chicken, but we leave the head. I mean, we eat the wings. Some people eat the feet. Like, what? But uh, why, why a not chicken's head is, like, this big. Right? right, so he said it was just a little bite. Right. So it's probably a little nugget, a little like a little marble type. But thing. to get to it, I feel like you have to like crack an egg kind of thing and like, the skull and oh, there it is. Bang it on the table. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. What and then all that for just one little bite. Well, maybe you do something with it. I don't know. Ask that chef that wants to cook the cake. That was it, my next question. Does he fry it? Yeah, does it? Does he I'll add, tell you what make a do. sandwich? I'll tell you what to do with it. Uh, yeah. Speaking of aging, a new survey of a bunch of Americans over the age of forty was uh, done about aging. Um, people said they don't begin to embrace getting older until they're 47. Yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't feel like I said, I just feel bad, but like mentally I, when I re remember how old I am, I go, Oh man, I am that old. I'm huh. almost 40. That sucks. Uh, 35% say they get offended if someone calls them old. Now, mind you, I coached high school baseball for like six years and the majority of that was in my 30s. Started in my 20s, but the majority of it was in my 30s. And yes, it's annoying. <laughs> these, these 16, 17, 18 year old boys are like, oh, Coach Puff, you're old. I'm hey, like, boomer. No, they don't do that because I'm not one. But they're like, Coach Puff, you're old. And I'm like, I could beat you up. Like, literally, I could end you. Cut it out. I never did that stuff. I never called people old. Unless my grandpa and stuff like that. And they were old, old. I call people like Pappy and, and Granny if they're acting old. Okay. They don't have to be old. But I'm like, oh, are you tired, Pappy? This next one is really funny to me. Seeing a celebrity that they've never heard of, having trouble seeing in dimly lit rooms and not being on TikTok uh, contributes to people feeling like they're too old. Um, the, the dimly lit room, I mean, that could happen when you're twenties. I mean, the, everyone's got issues. The TikTok thing is kind of funny, but the celebrity they never heard, heard of is hilarious because something will come along my, you know, newsfeed on Facebook or Instagram or something like that. And they'll be like, so-and-so dumped so-and-so. And I'm like, who's so-and-so or so-and-so? I don't know. <laughs> and they end up being like. TikTok people. Oh. And I'm like, and I'm on TikTok and I watch it and you know, whatever. But I don't know people by their names, mm -hmm. really. And I go, oh, it's that guy that does that thing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's that girl that does that dance. I, I like her more than him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, they broke up. Does that make you feel bad when you don't know a celebrity's name? I mean, no. you got kids. No. So it's a little bit different. So, like, one of your kids could be like, oh my God, did you hear so and so's going to be in the next mo Marvel movie? And you're like, I think the latest thing was of one of the Paul boys, Logan Paul or Jake Paul, like, what are they doing? Boxing? Yeah, or it's fighting That's, Floyd Mayweather. And I was like, I, I don't, I don't care. Yeah, you shouldn't. Seventy-seven <laughs> percent feel younger than they actually are. On average, people say they feel seven years younger than their actual age. Do you know what makes me feel old? Is I remember sitting in like um, the common area in my dorm room. And watching the NFL draft, right? This is going to make sense in a second. With my friends, okay. right? So we're watching the NFL draft, and obviously we're rooting for the Bills and all that stuff. And I'm like, oh, man, these guys are older than me. They're, they've, you know, graduated college, whatever, on the draft. And now I watch the NFL draft and go, man, look how young that kid looks. I could have birthed that thing. Like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, they're significantly younger than I am. 
and now significantly more wealthy and significantly more famous and it makes me feel like a loser an Aww. old an old loser not just a loser an old loser you know what makes me feel old Jumping off of a cliff into water and hurting myself. <laughs> a New York man was arrested and charged with cocaine possession Thursday after snorting the drug and acting erratically and causing a commotion on a commercial flight. He did it at his seat. Oh. So imagine you're flying back from Puerto Rico, butt all hurt. <laughs> you look across, tray, tray, tray table down, <laughs> brother doing a line, and you're like, Oh, do I say something? Nope, I mind my own business. Do I ask for something? <laughs> Does that hurt my pain or help my pain? According to federal court documents, JetBlue Airlines flight 915 was en route from New York to San Francisco. That's a long flight. When it diverted, yeah, it's like just a long flight. Midway through, basically, it got diverted to Minneapolis, St. Paul. Witnesses reported this guy named Mark was walking up and down the aisle. With a butter knife in his fist and snorting the white powder, so he off of the butter knife. He, so he started at his tray at his tray table, then was started walking up and down the aisle, <sighs> hey, like acting erratically and just continued to do it. How did he get through TSA? I don't know. He had a bag of the powder on his tray, which the flight attendant retrieved and later handed it over to police. Uh, after the landing, uh, the police detained this guy, field tested the powder, which came back positive as cocaine, weighed 24 and a half grams. I have no idea how much that is, but I'm guessing a lot. Uh, if convicted on the cocaine possession, he faces a maximum of three years in prison and a minimum fine of $5,000 they're investigating. He would think he would want to take a downer, not an upper, on the flight. Some people are like, I cannot wait for this in-flight movie. What's it going to be? I got to stay out. Oh, this is going to be a good one. I got to stay up the whole time. I don't want to blink and miss a millisecond of the action. <laughs> Coming up. Um, yeah, this is a weird law. Oops, wrong button. It's the Puff and Steph Podcast. Freisinger Hyundai, a refreshingly different car buying experience. Freisinger Hyundai dedicates itself to customer satisfaction. From the initial sale to the maintenance you'll need during the life of the vehicle, Freisinger Hyundai treats you like family. Check out their large selection of both the latest Hyundai lineup to certified pre-owned and used vehicles. Come see how Freisinger Hyundai drives the difference and tailors the purchase process to your needs. Right on the price, right on the pike. Freisinger Hyundai, 6115 Carlisle Pike Mechanicsburg, 717-766. 8422. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. Great news, everyone. American Shaman of PA's doors are back open for normal operations, and they're ready to bring you the much-needed relief that you've been waiting for. They care about their customers, and their customers keep coming back for more. Steve K says, American Shaman products drastically decrease my back pain and relieve my stress in just one month. Thank you. Stop by your local American Shaman of PA store for a free CBD sparkling water and free samples. Find their locations and more at HempusHealth.com. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy. No websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. Now back to the Puff and Steph podcast. We have a weird law alert there, Sammy. Check this out. Switzerland has a series of laws in place to protect animals. But one of the most peculiar pieces of legislation is related to guinea pigs. Guinea pigs are social creatures. Have you ever owned a guinea pig? No. Uh, they need interaction with their species in order to be happy. If you have one solitary guinea pig, 
it's usually a depressed one, which is kind of sad to think about. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure guinea pigs also, like, eat their young. I think, well, like, all those rodents do, don't they? I don't know, but it's kind of messed up. Like, you want a friend, so you can but birth. But you also want a snack. Yeah, but you want to birth. You should be birthing friends, not eating them. Anyway, um, so the European country in, in Switzerland uh, has made it illegal to own just one guinea pig and considers it to be animal cruelty and abuse. Hmm. Uh, they get very attracted to their owners and partners, so when uh, something does happen uh, to their cage mate, uh, Swiss guinea pig owners need to immediately find another to take its place. I don't know if they have, like... Guinea pig police? Yeah, authorities <laughs> going through houses. Just doing a random guinea pig check. Let me see your cage. Yeah. Where's the other one? No, no, no. Fine. Here you go. How, how long do, do they give you? I don't know. Is it 48 hours? Is it a week? I'm just giving my guinea pig time to grieve, okay? And Can't then just I'll get shove another, another guinea pig in there. What's more cruel? Them being depressed or them having a friend shoved in their face? Do you know when I went down to Myrtle Beach, they had a pet store. So the one day it was raining, so I went in. And they had hedgehogs. And I was like, oh, I really want one. Oh, that's cool. They're illegal in Pennsylvania. Really? So I'm like, well, how are they going to know if I bring one back? And what are they going to do if I have one? Did you look it up? Sure did. They euthanize them. I don't know who the hedgehog police are, but if somebody reports it, they just kill them then. I know we have a few cops that watch. But Co Cops that are watching or listening, just do me a favor. You don't have to put it up for everyone to see, but you can send me a message. Puff at puffinstuff.com or... You know, do it on socials. Have you ever like gone into a house and saw a hedgehog and had to confiscate? And like, and how do they euthanize this cop? Like, I don't want to do this, but bang, he shoots it. <laughs> I don't think you have to do all that. <laughs> do you just do you step on it, or do you call like animal control to do it? Well, or? no, because you you have to take it out because if you just whack it, all those rings fly out. It's not Sonic. <laughs> I got, I got the joke. Yeah, all right, yeah. good. Let's see if you get this stuff. Time to stump Sammy. During a family vacation, 80% of people let their kids do this. Drink. No. Oh. 80% of parents let their kids drink on a family vacation? No. Um, um, Let's move on. Uh, stay up late. Oh, yeah, there you go. yeah, it's a little bit more tame than... I don't know why I went from one to the Shots! other. Shots! <laughs> uh, according to a recent survey, the average parent has 15 of these per day. Mental breakdowns. No, I knew that was going to be <laughs> your answer. Or I was going to say meltdowns was the one you were going to say. 15 of these. And only parents have these? According to a recent survey, the average parent has 15 of these per day. I have way more. Of these per day. Way more. Yeah, I need a hint. Um, it's a good thing to have. It's a good thing to have more of than not. But it makes your day go faster when you have less. Bathroom breaks? Nope. I, I do not have more than 15 <laughs> bathroom breaks a then day. you're not drinking enough water. That's not true at all. You should not have 15 bathroom breaks. <laughs> uh, 15, and you want more. But is it because you're a parent you only have 15? Correct. Snacks? Nope. <laughs> snacks? I don't have 15 snacks a day. I'm just thinking more snacks is better, but if you're a parent, your kids eat your snacks, so you have less snacks. No, it's not snacks. Oh. I... I need another hint. Um, it's, it's, uh, how do I do this without completely giving it away? I need to pick my questions better. Do so I, I have 15 of these? It, a day? It, you know what? It involves your schedule and I don't, I don't know. I think it depends on the day. I think some days you may have more than 15. Some days you might have less than 15. It, 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 it involves how busy you are. Minutes of peace and quiet? 
Really? Yeah. That's it? <laughs> According to a recent survey, the average parent has 15 minutes of free time per day. Oh. Is that right? No. You have more than that? I make more than that or I'll go crazy. <laughs> Get out of the house. Uh, uh, this is where you say, kids, let's play hide and go seek. Okay. Go count. And then you. Take you, a nap. Yeah. But they'd always find you. Not, not if you hide well. <laughs> you hide in dark places. They don't like to go there. <laughs> I think she's hiding in the basement again. But I'm not going down there. <laughs> All right. Uh, I appreciate you filling in the last couple of days. I hope your butt gets better. Hey, thanks. I really, really do. I, I'll be thinking about your butt. That didn't sound right. No. All right. Uh, Steph will be back tomorrow. I mean, probably. <laughs> We will see you guys then. Have yourselves a great Tuesday. It's the Puffin Steph Podcast.